First <clears throat> Peter chapter three, we can put it up on the board or the I know it's Hebrews. There we go. We're gonna find it there. <coughs> Excuse me. First Peter three. Let's start with verse 18. We, were, we started last week with this, and I want to just move along in this message a little longer. Everybody there, and it's up on the screen. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. It's in, this is from the Amplified. I'm reading it from the Amplified. For Christ the Messiah himself died for our sins once for all. He never has to do that again. You know, in the Old Testament, they had to continue to bring the sheep and the uh, oxen and the animals to be sacrificed. But Jesus Christ is the one sacrifice for the whole world. When he died, he died for everybody, even those that had rejected him, he died for them. One sacrifice, that's what it says, died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous. He was the righteous one, we were the unrighteous. The just for the unjust, he was the just, we were the unjust. The innocent for the guilty, he was the innocent, and we were the guilty. Notice this, that he might bring us to God. I know a lot of times when we read the scriptures and we talk about, boy, it's wonderful to have your sins forgiven, and, and that is great, and that's wonderful. The Bible says that we are to be envied, we are to be, we are to be, uh, we are blessed because all of our sins have been washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's how powerful the blood of Jesus Christ is, that all of our sins are washed away. And when we come to Christ, not only does he forgive us of all of our sins of the past, he does not remember them against us anymore. How many times the enemy has brought up to your mind certain sins of your past? Well, God don't remember them. Satan remembers them, and he will accuse you, for he's the accuser of the brother. Now, I want you to look at that there. It says that he, that is Christ, might bring us to God in his human body. He was put to death, but he was made alive in the spirit. Now, I want to, just for that one phase in that scripture, that he might bring us to God. That is powerful. Because, see, we were separated from God by the Adam's sin and by our sins. Christ died that we might have eternal life. That's true. He died that all of our sins might be forgiven. But he died to bring us back to God. Now, I'm going to show that little demonstration I did last week. I need, a, I need someone to be the father. Who wants to be the father? Okay, we'll, have, we'll let him be the father. Yeah. All right, here's the father. All right, Charles, where you at? Would you go back and get that cross for me? Here's the Father. Now, we need somebody to be the, to be the human race. Who wants to be the human race? <coughs> Willie said he was going to be the human race. Okay, oh, Willie, Willie, human race. You know, if you don't volunteer, I have a way of volunteering you. you know. <laughs> All right, you're the human race. Now, who wants to be sin? Now, don't, don't everybody jump up at one time. Who wants to be sin? All right, sin, come on. The young lady, right, who wants to be sin. <coughs> All right, sin. Sin's right there. Now, believe it or not, she's a little girl, and she's sin, and, and she is keeping Willie from God. <laughs> now, the Bible says, the, the Bible says sin is pleasant and is fun for a season. Do we all agree with that? Don't, don't, yeah, we're, come on, don't lie to me. Do we all agree to that? Sin, 
Now, we're talking about when we were in sin. That, why did you do it? It was fun. See? But the end, listen to this, but the end thereof is death. So you can, you can go ahead and sin all you want to, but the end of your life will be death, eternal separation from God the Father because of sin. So therefore, the human man or the human woman comes into the understanding, how's he going to get to God when sin is keeping him from the Father? What is the answer to that dilemma? We need somebody that will be Jesus. All right, Jesus, come on up. All right, you step over there with the Father. Now the Father says, Son, I so love the world that I volunteered you <laughs> to go down to the earth and die on a cross. Would you go? Oh, you got the cross there. Oh, you don't have to go yet. Just, uh, I'm gonna mil- <laughs> let, me, let me milk this a little bit because we're, we're painting a picture here. And the Father's saying to you, I so love the world that I'm going to give you to come down there and save him. But he can't come to me because he inherited the sin from Adam, plus he's done a few hundred thousand sins himself. (laughs) And so you're the just. He's the unjust. You're the innocent. The father says, I know you're the innocent. He's the guilty. See, he's sucking it up. See, he knows he's smoking his long cigars. But, But you see, that's the natural man. He feeds his earthly desires. Those are, that's just natural. That's called the natural man. He's the natural man. His spirit is dead at this point. He can't go to the Father. See, see the Father. <laughs> Something happened behind my back. <laughs> Lord, help me to keep my mouth <laughs> full. It's all her fault. Sin, sin. <laughs> So the father is going to, he's going to take his innocent son because you see, God is a holy God. Sin has to be paid for. Now, let's break this down to simplicity. Charles, would you come up for a moment? Y'all just hold your position. You behave yourself. Charles was caught speeding, doing 100 miles an hour in a, t- in a 55 miles an hour zone. And he's guilty. All right? The judge. Would you stand up here as a judge? I'm just... <laughs> he's, he's guilty. He's guilty. I'm bringing this down where we can understand it now. He's guilty. There's the judge. The judge knows the rules. Uh, justice has to, uh, the law has to be put, he broke the law, right. it has to be dealt with. Now, you have got to pay $1,000 for your fine or go to jail for 100 years. No, no, but he, but he doesn't have the money. He doesn't have the money. And the judge, listen, it's not a personal thing with the judge. He broke the law. The law says, the law says he's got to pay the guilty, the unjust. He's got to pay for his crimes, but he ain't got no money. So he's going to have to go to jail for, well, let's say 100 years. (laughs) No, you didn't live in that long. We'll put it 90 days. Susan, would you step up here, darling? How many of you know Jesus is a lawyer? He's an advocate. Mm-hmm. First John chapter 2. And Susan comes up. Where's your pocketbook, honey? Bring your pocketbook up. 
Yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's it then. I got you turn it loose. <laughs> Man, she's strong. All right. She has the money to redeem him. He's got a lock on it. Now <laughs> And the judge, listen, it's not a personal thing with her, but she has to uphold the law. He broke the law. He's got to pay, but he don't have the money. But she, st <laughs> she steps up. Keep your money. Honey, we're not talking about real money here, darling. <laughs> you whip her. Look at her. Look at her whipping out of that. It's All right. coming to me. No, All right. <laughs> We'll probably have to throw this DVD away, I'm sure. <laughs> but I'm going to get the point across. Justice has to be dealt with. It has, to, it has to be held up. The law was broken. And the law says 90 days in jail or $1,000. He doesn't have it. And she says, I'm sorry, you have got to go to jail for 90 days if you don't have the 1000 He says, I don't have the 1000 She's got to uphold the law. The law says you go to jail for 90 days. Ah, but the lawyer comes up and says, Your Honor, this is a thousand. thank you, that's not a $100 bill. <laughs> I want to pay his fine for him. He is guilty. He needs to go to jail. But I so love him so much, I will satisfy the law and pay the fine. And she, he takes, the judge takes the, the money, stamps, clear, you're free. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and you can go. And she paid the price. And he didn't have to work for it. She done it because of her grace and mercy. You may be seated. And that's the way it is. And that's what Jesus Christ did. He doesn't have any money because, and he don't have no works the Bible says we're not saved by works, lest any man should boast. He's guilty. You can look at that and tell you that. You can look at that and see that. He's guilty, man. He, yeah, he's guilty. He knows that. Now, the Holy Spirit's been working on him about sin. He, all of a sudden, the, where's the Holy Spirit at? Holy Spirit, come right here. All right, you're working, you're working on him. I'm preaching the gospel. And I'm preaching. See, the, the gospel is the, is the power of salvation. And God uses the gospel of Jesus Christ to preach to people. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit convicts him of his sin, his selfishness, his beating his wife every Sunday morning before church. I mean, staying out, staying out late at Saturday night, boozing all night. But see, that's natural. That's what the natural man does. He, that's, he feeds his own appetite. You can't help it. That's why you've got to be born again. You've got to have somebody to intervene for you. And the Holy Spirit comes to intervene. But mama's over here. Mama, come on, mama. Mama's over here. Pray, sit right here. Mama's over here praying. Praying. And the Holy Spirit hears the prayers. Save my son. Save my son. And so the Holy Spirit hears. So I'm preaching the gospel. He hears it. He hears it. Okay. And all of a sudden, he realized that Jesus Christ took care of sin. And sin is taken care of. And sat down. Where, Jesus. Where's Jesus? Jesus comes over here. Comes into his heart. Go ahead. And take him to the Father. Yeah. Take him to the Father. Take him for the Father. Amen. Okay. And he did it all on the cross. He paid the debt on the cross. He's now, he's not lost. He has a new nature now in him. Holy Ghost, man. Don't leave me out. Yeah, that's right. Now God fills him with the Spirit. When he received Christ, he receives the Holy Spirit in him. Now he has a new nature in him. Okay. And now the war begins to really fight. The old nature still wants to go out on a Saturday night. When I first, oh, y'all going to sit down. Thank you so much. You did excellent. <laughs> Thank you, young lady. You did excellent. Now, when I was first saved, as far as God was concerned, I was perfect. Perfect in my spirit. My spirit man was a new creation. Perfect. But my habits, my old carnal habits, my old thinking 
was still operating. And so Sunday morning comes, and the wife says, are we going to church? Well, I don't think I want to go to church this morning. But you were so alive last Sunday when you went to church. You were saved, you know. You're a new creature. Now notice the battle. The old part of us that's not saved yet, just lay here and sleep. I mean, you look real good in the bed. Just sleep here. It's okay. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit's in you and saying, you need to get up and go to church. Because you see, that part, what you feed, will grow. And you need to come to church, feed your inner man, that your inner man would grow and become strong. And so you finally get up. Okay, you get ready. You come to church. You're 10 minutes late, but you come to church. And so when you leave the church, hallelujah, you feel great. You feel wonderful. Hallelujah. You go back home. You're good for two days. And then the old man, the Bible says, put off the old man. See, you don't know how to put off the old man. Now, I'm not talking about your husband, girls. I'm talking about the old man. You know, the, the Bible, read that in the Bible. It's in the Bible, you know, Ephesians. Okay, put off the old man. But you haven't learned how to put him off. And he said, come on, let's go out with the boys again. Come on, we had a great time last week. So you fail. You go out you, with the boys. You drink a little bit too much. You come back. And the Holy Spirit's working in you. You really messed up, didn't you? Well, not too bad. But you feel awful. The Holy Spirit's working in your heart. You're a man of God now. You're a child of God. You don't belong to yourself anymore. You've been bought with a price. Don't you remember? You received Christ, and Christ brought you back to the Father. He's got so much for you now. He's got eternity with rewards and blessings. But while you're down here, he wants to use you to share Jesus with other people. And so what happens, you, be, you come to church, you begin to learn, you begin to learn how to put the old man off. You learn that the old man, when Christ died on the cross, that your old selfish self, the old man died with Christ and was buried and you are now a new creation. And, and now that you begin to read the Word of God, you get into the Word of God, your mind begins to get renewed now because you're spending time into the Word. You're getting stronger spiritually. You begin to share your faith with others and your faith begins to grow and mature. And, 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 and there's still that little battle, but, but now you're learning to put off the old man and the more you put him off the stronger you get in your spirit man and now you you just love jesus you you love people you, you, why you even learn to tithe i remember when when i first got saved and man i know i, I, I just love the lord but i still smoked cigarettes i still drank and i still cursed a little bit And I remember that first year, how the Holy Spirit really was working with me. And, and, and I remember, we, we worked out at the air base there, uh, and we had what you call 15-minute breaks. And you couldn't smoke on the airplane. We had to work on airplanes, and uh, so we would leave the, the dock. We call it the dock or the hangar. And we walked out to this uh, smoking zone, and you could, and, and really, what you could see was it was sm it was a cloud by day and a fire by night. <laughs> yeah, and I remember when I was fight. I, see, I'm saying this to help you, because because it is a struggle to break loose of some of these old habits. In, any witness in here today? You know, now some of you were perfect. Okay, well that's good. Uh, I ain't talking to you. You perfect. But I'm telling you, there are those that have struggled in certain areas, and, and I struggled with this cigarette, and the Holy Spirit was convicting me, and I knew that it was killing me, it was hurting me, it was not the right thing to do, and, uh, and I'm just sharing my experience, you can share yours, okay, but I'm sharing my experience, but, and I remember, okay, I, first thing, don't buy no more cigarettes, I didn't buy no more cigarettes, but my friend smoked, so break time, so I walk out there, <coughs> excuse me, in the daytime, the cloud by day, and I'd suck, I, I, I wasn't smoking, but just, you know, you, you know, they say that secondhand smoke is worse than, than the original. Did you know that? You know it now. Anyway, but 
I said, this ain't getting the thing. This thing ain't done. And then I started bumming cigarettes off of him. And finally, about a week later, he said, man, you go, that's it. I ain't giving you no more cigarettes. So, but I'm, I'm struggling. But then I realized, the Bible says, record yourself to be dead indeed to sin. Reckoning means counted already done. And I says, okay, I'm going to start using the word of God. So every time I wanted to smoke, number one, I didn't go out there where they were smoking. Anybody hearing me? I separated myself from that cloud. I didn't hang around those people that were sucking on cigarettes. Okay? So I come over, and what I did, I'd get my Bible, and I'd go over in the corner, i start reading my little Bible. And I, and I found Romans 6, 6. Knowing this, that my old man has been crucified, verse 11 Reckon yourself to be dead indeed unto cigarettes, but alive unto God through Christ Jesus my Lord. And do not yield your body as the instruments to cigarettes any longer, but yield them to God. Three verses. Now when you read the scriptures, a lot of times some of the promises of God won't work for people because they don't understand. Many promises come in two and they come in three. Okay? If I shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, one principle, and if I shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, two principles, and what happens? Thy shall be saved. Okay? So that was, that's two principles. So what I did, I continued to do that. Every time I wanted to smoke, I would reckon myself to be dead indeed under sin, and within, I would say, and within four or five months, that was way back in the 50s. I haven't smoked a cigarette since. Amen. I am free. And I thank God at 78 years old and a half, I can breathe. Now, if, you, if you're not there yet, I'm not here to condemn you. Okay, I understand that. If you're not there, if you haven't conquered that, I mean, there's some folks hadn't conquered gossip yet. I won't mention any of the sins right now. But anyway, I want to edify you today. You don't, you don't mean, but I'm telling you, my experience, that you realize that your old man was crucified 2,000 years ago. See, that's faith. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. You put faith in God's Word. The Holy Spirit has a responsibility to make it come alive and make it work in your life. You can't make it work. Your job is to speak it. Come on. So I, I conquered cigarettes. Then it was the booze I had to conquer. See, back when I used to drink, we used to drink these big, they had these quart, quart jars of beer. But I did the same thing. Do you realize how much money I have for other things today because I quit cigarettes and booze? Anybody want to count it? Give me a calculator. Come on. Huh? Come on. i got a, a banker right here. How about, how about thousands? Thousands. Come on, speak to me out there, Congress. Thousands, thousands, thousands of dollars because God in His graciousness and the power of the Holy Spirit, you can't de- do this in your own power. You have to learn to connect onto the Word of God. You have to learn how to connect onto the Holy Spirit. And He will do that work in you. God has begun a good work in us. God is still working in us that he might do something through us. I see see people trying to do things themselves. I say, once you stop, let the Holy Spirit do it in you first, and then he'll do it through you. Now, it's a corporation where workers together with him. But everything in your life you can overcome. Now, you know, you look at me and you say, boy, you know, he never had no problems. Are you kidding I was born a problem. I used to have an anger. Let me just take a little input. How many's got anger in here? I see your hands. I see. Let's see if you've got anger. Okay, that's okay. Be angry. 
be angry, but sin not. If you see somebody out there beating somebody out, up, that would make me angry. So I say, Charles, go out and take care of that. <laughs> There's things, Jesus got angry. Listen to me, Jesus got angry. That's in the Bible. His spirit was vexed. Sometimes your spirit will be so vexed. I mean, I used to feel like I'd be so guilty. And the, whole, the devil would accuse me. But I read in the Bible, Jesus' spirit was vexed. His spirit was grieved. And he got angry. Be angry, the Bible says. But sin not. So you're going to have to learn. Now, we have, anybody here have trouble with their mouth? Where's the tape, Where's the tape Frank? We have tape we'll give you. Just put the tape over your mouth. That's all, it's simple. This one man said that uh, those that have trouble smoking cigarettes, and about 10 people, 20 people, no, it was 20 people, it was at a conference, raised their hands. He said, meet me after the service. I got just a thing that'll help you overcome those cigarettes. And what he did, he gave each one of them what do you call those things that the babies put in their mouth? Pacifier. That's all cigarettes are, pacifier. What? Did you know why a lot of people are talking on the phone? They ain't talking to nobody. They, they, they just don't want to look you in the face. They're just walking down the street. <laughs> they ain't talking to nobody. I, I'm serious. That's what they found out. They, they investigated that. People just don't want to look, just talk with people. So they, like, a, you know. It, yeah, I look important. I just look impor important. <laughs> so anyway, he gave the pacifiers to these men. And that night, when the, in the night service, every one of them was on the front row sucking on their pacifiers. Uh, next Sunday, for those that are having problems with cigarettes, I'll have pacifiers for you. And anytime you want a cigarette, just pull out your pacifier. <laughs> And we'll make sure we'll have the camera on you. And just start sucking on it. That's all. It'll pacify you. That's all cigarettes are. And listen, it's a lot cheaper. I, I don't know. I was looking at the I was looking at the other day and I was loading gas and this. How much does a pack of cigarettes cost now? How many? How many? Six dollars and fifty cents for how many? A pack? Six dollars a pack? Man, I got too much Scotchman in me to pay that. I tell you, wow, man, six dollars and some a pack for cigarettes? Well, Bob, are you saying we're not going to get to heaven if we smoke? No, you're going to get there quicker than we all are. I tell you that, right? I, I've been in the hospitals and seen people, I mean, they're breathing heavy. I mean, <laughs> pray for me, Pastor Bob. I said, do you remember? I prayed for you 30 years ago, and I told you to stop. Jesus said, stop. <laughs> but <laughs> How many love me? Real life, real problems. So there are areas that we have to overcome. If you're saved, listen to me, if you're saved, you can't get no more Savior than yes. you are now. Okay? The Bible says he, God has made us holy. He made us holy. Our spirit man is holy. The problem is not there. If you're born again, your spirit is saved, you've been brought back to the Father. But this flesh is where you're having problems. Okay? Now, I've overcome a lot of things in my life. I've overcome cigarettes. I've overcome booze. I've overcome my anger. I ain't going no further than that. <laughs> and I give God the praise and the glory. When God, amen. When God began to show me where the problem was, getting my mind renewed as, and reading the Word of God, and as I begin to read of the word of the Lord, I begin to speak the word of God. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am complete in Christ. God's not giving me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The power is not of the vessel or the flesh, but the power in us as Christians is from God. And that power 
will help you to overcome everything in your flesh. If you know how to cooperate with the Holy Spirit and put that old man off, you'd be surprised how your relationship will, will develop in, in, in relationships with your mates, with your children, with people at church, and even with yourself. I've even learned to love myself. I'm not talking about loving my actions, my mean actions. And my, no, I'm talking about loving myself as a person. Now, wait a minute now. You're not supposed to love yourself. No, 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 listen to this. Love your neighbor as what? As you love yourself. Sometimes people can't love their neighbor because they don't love themselves. And when you don't love yourself, you mean. You want to take me on? Come on, that's true. You, you, you feel mean. You want to fight because you don't feel love. You don't accept yourself. You don't feel like a human being. But when you realize that God so loved you, he gave the most precious thing in the world, his only begotten son. Do you know anybody else that died for you? We were guilty. We were unrighteous. But he made us righteous. He made us just. He did it. And when we put our faith and trust in what he has done, the Holy Spirit makes it alive, clears the record, not guilty anymore removes your sins as far as the east is from the west. And listen to this. Would you put 1 Timothy, no, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 10 on the board. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 10. I want you to see this. It is that purpose and grace which he now has made known and has fully disclosed and made real to us through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus. Notice this, who annulled death, underline that, who annulled death, amplified, and made it of no effect and brought life and immortality, immunity from eternal death to light through the gospel. Now meditate on that. We'll keep that right up there. Look at it. Look at it. Powerful. You will never die. Well, Bob, you're preaching heresy. No, no, no. Jesus said, he that believeth in me shall never die. Death does not have power over the child of God. Read that. Read it in your own, your own King James. Annul death. Immunity. You're immune to death. Oh, this body will pass away. You wouldn't want to. How many wants to go to heaven in these bodies? None of us do. No, he's got a brand new body for us. But we, our spirit man, we are spirit beings. You will never go into that coffin. Because the Bible says, what? Absent from what? Absent from the body, present with the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter, eight, uh, chapter 5, verse 8. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Death has no dominion over you whatsoever. It's been annulled, dealt with by Jesus Christ on the cross. And when that day comes, when this old body quits breathing, I'm out of here, and I'm in heaven with my Lord. And so it will be for every child of God that has put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Many rewards God will give to his people and they will be eternal rewards. I want you to listen to me, and I'm going to close. Every man and every woman has been given a will. God will not trespass your will. You must decide where you're going to spend eternity. I want to make it very clear. God sends no one to hell. You send yourself there by rejecting the one that died for you to keep you out of hell. 
And when you reject him, then you assign yourself to that place. It's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God's done all he's going to do. Now, it's your decision. And the decisions you make today will affect your tomorrow. Now listen to me very carefully. We're dealing with eternal matters here. Even in the natural, the decisions you make here today will affect 10 years, 15, 20 years down the road. And the decisions that you make today for eternity, the decision that you make that you're going to let Christ be your Savior because he's done the work. Salvation is waiting for you. It was done once and for all by the one man, Christ Jesus. But now you must decide. Is it to be Satan as your master? Or is it to be God as your master? The decision rests with humanity. Let's pray. Father, I pray that each person here today